Good morning, everyone. Thank you all for coming to History is Lunch here in the Craig H. Nielsen Auditorium. It is the first of the month. For those of you who are not familiar with it, that is the storm and tornado siren being tested at the back of the library across the street. It's an exciting place to be. I don't know. I'm Chris Goodwin with the Mississippi Department of Archives and History. If you have not already, please silence your cell phones. And uh, I note with sadness the death of scholar and author John Geis on Monday, a longtime professor at the University of Southern Mississippi. In 2011, John was presented the Mississippi Historical Society's Dunbar Rowland Award for his lifelong contributions to the preservation, study, and interpretation of Mississippi history. He was a friend to the department, friend to the Mississippi Historical Society for decades, and we will all miss him. On Sunday, August the 5th, from 1.30 to 4.30 p.m., here at the Museum of Mississippi History, we'll have our final Summer Sunday series of the year. The museum will celebrate Mississippi's rich cultural history with quilting crafts, block printing, scavenger hunts, and a live performance by Indianola Bluesman and visual artist Bobby Whalen. That's free with admission. Those have been great, uh, especially if you have kids and looking for something to do on Sunday afternoon, come by the History Museum. And I hope that you'll be able to join us next week when University of Alabama professor David Beto will be our speaker. He'll discuss his book, T.R.M. Howard, Doctor, Entrepreneur, Civil Rights Pioneer. Today, though, we are delighted to have Ken Sari, Dean of the University of Mississippi School of Business, Business Administration, and alumni General Leon Collins, Dick Malpas, and Candy Simmons to discuss the book, Ole Miss Business, The First 100 Years, 1917 to 2017. Ken Sari is Dean, the Frank R. Day Mississippi Bankers Association Chair of Banking and Professor of Finance at the University of Mississippi School of Business Administration. He was named Outstanding Teacher of the Year in 2007 and Outstanding Senior Researcher in 2014 for the School of Business Administration. Sari earned his doctorate and MBA from the University of Tennessee. Major General Augustus L. Collins is the first African American to attain the rank of General in the history of the Mississippi, United, uh, the Mississippi National Guard. He served in the United States Army and Mississippi National Guard for more than 35 years and was promoted to Brigadier General in 2005. Collins retired in 2016 after serving five years as the Adjutant General of both the Mississippi Army National Guard and the Mississippi Air National Guard. He is the CEO of MenAct Incorporated. Collins earned his BA in Business Administration from the University of Mississippi, an MBA from Jackson State University, and a Master's in Strategic Studies from the United States Army War College. Candy Simmons graduated from the School of Business Administration in 2002, worked at the university until 2006 when she began a career in banking. The Mississippi Business Journal named Simmons to its top 40 under 40 list in 2009 and is a top 10 finalist on its top 50 leading business women list in 2013. Simmons serves as a board member for the Cure Sickle Cell Foundation, Make-A-Wish Mississippi, Community Foundation for Mississippi, and the University of Mississippi Women's Council and University of Mississippi Banking and Finance Advisory Board. Dick Malpas served three years as Missis three terms as Mississippi Secretary of State. In 1985, he co-founded Parents for Public Schools, which now has 17 chapters in 12 states. A member of the Mississippi Business Hall of Fame, Malpas is the founder and chairman of the Malpas Woodlands Group. He graduated from the School of Business Administration in 1971, and in 2013 was inducted into the University of Mississippi Alumni Hall of Fame. We'll hear first from Dean Syrie, then watch a 20-minute video that was produced on the occasion of the school centennial. Then we'll hear from General Collins, Candy Simmons, and Dick Malpas in that order. Help me welcome Ken Syrie. Thank you, Chris, for those kind words and that really warm and nice introduction. We really appreciate that. What a great event this is. Uh, to be honest, I really didn't know that we did this, so I, I feel like I've missed out. Uh, this is just incredible. Uh, and I want to thank all of you for being here. This is just a wonderful turnout. We have three very distinguished speakers today and me, so I, I know that you're here to hear them, so I'll be relatively brief. Uh, I do want to thank uh, Neil White, who put this book together for us with the help of Stella Connell, who's sitting right here in the audience. They did a fantastic job. Uh, and really, this book is excellent. Uh, to be honest, uh, I'm in the book, uh, and, and that part uh, is towards the back. And Stella asked me, she said, did you read the book? And I said, well, I read my part. 
And she said, well, you really need to read the book. And I said, okay, I'll do that. So I was waiting on a plane and I was sitting in the airport and I was thumbing through the book and I got so enthralled with the book because it really is good that I almost missed my plane. But then finally they said, sir, I think you need to get on the plane. We're closing the door. I said, yeah, I think you're right. There is tremendous scandal, intrigue. Uh, the first dean, for example, uh, helped finance the football team and probably without Dean Bell, we wouldn't have football at the University of Mississippi. So you need to pick this up. You need to read this book. It's a great coffee table book, but it's a great read. And they did a wonderful job in preparing this. So I urge you to buy this book. There are many, many distinguished alumni in it, and it's just a wonderful read. We also have from the university, Amy Jo Carpenter with us. And we have also the first lady of the business school, Miss Lori, my wife, who's sitting right out there too. Uh, yeah, she, she deserves applause, trust me on that. But I'm going to talk very briefly about what's in the book, and then I'll let these guys add some color with the story uh, of what's going on in, in their lives and how we prepared them for success, and you'll also get to watch a video. But I'll be relatively brief, I promise. The Ole Miss Business School started in 1917 with just a handful of students and eight faculty. There were only 150 students at the university in 1917. Now though, there are four themes that have continued since 1917, and that is a theme of growth, change, continuous improvement, and increased reputation and rankings of the School of Business. And I'm glad to be a, a part of that over some of that period. We, we initially had classes in typing. You remember typing? Some of you actually remember real typewriters, right? Now though, we have 11 majors spanning finance, marketing, entrepreneurship, management, information systems, and even general business. So we've come a very long way. All of our faculty have permanent, or all of our permanent faculty have PhDs now. That was not true when we started. We now have over 3,800 students. And we also, if we add accounting, we have over 5,000 students as we compare ourselves to other SEC schools, compared to 150 in the entire university when we started. We were just re-accredited by AACSB, the top accrediting agency in the world. And our undergraduate program was just ranked 65 among public business programs. And our online MBA program was just ranked 22. It's pretty good. Uh, in a recent Wall Street Journal survey, 88% of students indicated they would choose Ole Miss again. That's also pretty good. Of our more than 3,800 students, 35% are female and 15% are minority students. All of these facts underscore our main mission. As we say in our mission statement, vision statement, it is to cultivate innovative and effective leaders. I like to say it like this, our job is to prepare our students and graduates for success, simply put. And that is what we do. This year we graduated our largest ever class, 747 students. Our undergraduates average about $45,000 in starting salaries, with 72% finding employment by graduation. Over 50% of our students had internships while they were at Ole Miss. We are the only R1 research school in Mississippi and our big business faculty published 119 articles since 2017. All of our efforts, though, are against a backdrop of reduced funding from the state, and this is true throughout the United States. When I first came to campus to teach at the School of Banking before I was a faculty member, we got about two-thirds of our funding from the state of Mississippi. Today it's about 14% or so, depending on how you want to count. The remainder is made up through tuition, and through private giving. So that truly is the margin of excellence, as Robert Kayat would have put it. That allows us, though, to do what we do, and with more, we could even do better. But I am very pleased with what we've been able to do at the business school, and that is largely because of the, de the dedication of our staff and faculty. And they have worked very hard to prepare our st students for success. It also has something to do with our students. Our students have worked hard, and they've learned what they needed to learn, and what I hope we've done, and that's what we strive to do, is to prepare them to be successful through lifelong, lifelong learning and also through a desire to learn more as they move through their careers and their professions. And that's what makes Ole Miss so great. It is the people. It is you in this audience, the alumni, the friends of Ole Miss, and the people who give back to our students who allow them to go out and be successful. 
to give them that first job. And by the way, you should meet Amy Jo Carpenter. That's her job is to, to help rebels get jobs. So all of you should seek her out. Uh, and, and that's a wonderful thing to do because everybody needs a start, as you'll see in the video. So I will conclude in saying this, that we are here and we have worked hard and we will continue to work hard for the future to make Ole Miss a great place for our kids and grandkids. So now, uh, as we watch this video, you can learn about some of the things that uh, we're celebrating here with our 100-year anniversary. Thank you for your time, and I appreciate you coming out today. you say that the business school at Ole Miss affected or changed your life in a positive way? Well, it keeps me in touch with Ole Miss for one thing. And I put that up at the top of the deal because it's, been, it's given me a chance to involved with the uh, students, which, uh, which I enjoy doing and doing that, and, then, uh, and also uh, keeping up with the people. Been a good spot in my life, as far as I believe. It's always, I recommend it to anybody. <laughs>Mississippi had nine governors. During that same period, Ole Miss went through four different chancellors, and yet he stood solitary as the dean of that school for that entire period. Dean Bell had a great relationship with his students, and those that he taught would continue correspondence with him and a friendship with him if they were still around. One of the more memorable was Bunch Clark, the first female graduate was in 1930, and that was Mary Frances Clark. She served as treasurer, and she also went on to marry Tad Smith, for whom the basketball arena is named. And Tad Smith went on to serve as one of the longest standing athletic directors that we've had at Ole Miss. My mother was Mary Frances Clark Smith. She came to Ole Miss. It was all during the Depression, but she graduated around 1930. And uh, she came up here and met Daddy, and he wanted to go steady. And she says, I'm not going steady with anyone. I, if I go steady with anyone, I will marry them. And they got married on September 17th, I think. Uh, mother and, uh, and Ted Jean and I went to Memphis to pick up uh, Daddy because he was coming home from the, the Second World War. And it, there was a football game, of course. And so we had to go to the football game. And uh, as we were going up in Crump Stadium, Everybody started congratulating Daddy, and he said, Mama, what are they talking about? Congratulations. And she said, well, they are going to offer you the uh, athletic director at the University of Mississippi. He said, you've already accepted me a job. <laughs> Uh, and then in 1941, the MBA program was established, and shortly thereafter, the PhD program in both business and economics was established. 
arrived overseas in mid-January 1945, and I was a first lieutenant in the infantry. A week before our training ended and they were going to ship us out, the bomb was dropped. I, I had graduated and I had been able to get into a new movement. The, uh, they had just established an MBA program at Ole Miss and nobody had taken anything in regard to it. So I was the first student in that MBA program. I wrote my thesis on husband and wife partnership. At that time, there were no joint returns. The government kind of was hard on people that said they, husband and wife, that said they had a partnership because if they were a partnership, they could divide the earnings, you see. It was a problem. It was a big problem. Well, I got out of the Army, and I got game here with uh, went to school starting in January. And the, the, the business school uh, was located in the high slavery building, so I naturally had a lot of my classes uh, in this building. I was on the insurance board since, since I was one of the hits that edited it, that made the new insurance board. Uh, I think it's just one of the best things that, uh, that's ever, that happened uh, to the school to the business school, or at least. Uh. My education in business that I received from the university has helped me realize the goals that I want to reach throughout my, my life. It helped me with my teaching. It helped me as we were building the Children's Museum because I had the business background. I knew about business plans. I knew about marketing. I knew about so many areas that you need to know when you are starting an enterprise. So I'm so grateful to the university and to the business school for that background, that knowledge, that education that allowed me to do exactly what I did with the Children's Museum. Not only did I earn a living teaching with my business degree, I was able to provide to something special to the community. So following World War II, we had some growth with finally 210 graduates in 1961. But in 1961, enrollment exploded to over 1,100 students. I would love to tell you that that was because of an innovative program, but frankly, it was because the Lyceum didn't have air conditioning and Connor Hall did have air conditioning. You know, as I look back uh, uh, during those years, uh, while I was in the business school, had uh, many opportunities to network among uh, the students. And uh, the networking uh, came to be one of the real assets of uh, my career. There's no way to prepare for what I ended up doing. When I left Ole Miss, I went to work for the state of Mississippi and the state's economic development agency. Uh, and, and well, I'll tell you another story. Brad Dye was uh, the director of the A&I board, the state economic development agency. He came to Fulton Chapel and he said, Mississippi offers both the need and the opportunity for young Mississippi college graduates. Boy, that's exactly what I wanted to hear because I was getting ready to graduate and I didn't have a job. So I called him up made an appointment, went to Jackson, sat down with him. I said, Mr. Dye, you said Mississippi offers both the need and the opportunity for young Mississippi college graduates. I'm a young Mississippi college graduate, and I need a job, and I want an opportunity. He said, well, what can you do? I said, I work hard. He said, well, what kind of experience do you have? I said, not much, but if you don't give me a job, I won't have any. And he did. It's hard to pinpoint just one thing, you know. I think what you take away from a degree from the Ole Miss Business School is a, is a collection of things. 
that you'll use throughout your career. Uh, you won't even appreciate everything you're learning while you're here. But as you, uh, in my case, pursued a corporate career, uh, I'll always remember, you know, something that I learned in a classroom at Ole Miss. In the late 1960s and entering into the 70s, we saw an increase in technology which did affect also the business school. As we got our first computer and students started using technology both in the classroom and outside the classroom. It's also a period of some of the best rock and roll in America. In the 1980s, we saw a lot of growth in the business school as well, and it was aided by private giving. For example, the Palmer Scholarships came forward at that time to help fund the MBA program. We also saw other private giving such that the school benefited greatly from this. and We were able to hire outstanding faculty and increase our staff, and that helped serve the students of the business school. One of the, the reasons that we got interested in the business school is because through the business school these are the young people mo that are going out and wanting to start businesses of their own and uh, that just in intrigued us because of the work we've done and the companies we have invested in in the past it just helps the state it helps um, our economy you know it's just a, a no-brainer keep the brightest the best and brightest here in the state One thing that I'm so excited about the business school and why I would uh, just do anything in the world for it is that this is where we got our opportunity. This is where we got into the entrepreneurship and really got into it. And it's just little things like that that excite me. And if we can just pass this on and the professors and the dean and uh, and our, our new chancellor, they're behind this thing 100%. And, and I think it's just gonna move our business school eons up. So I, 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 went, I was Leon Collins until, 19, until May the 20th, 1977 when I reported for basic training in the United States Army, and they told me, your name is Augustus L. Collins. <laughs> yes, Jill Sarge. Well, there, there, was, there was certain things that the Ole Miss Business School uh, helped me with uh, in my military career, uh, for instance. Uh, uh, human relations, you know, the, 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 the courses that I took on, on uh, on, on, on human resources are very beneficial because uh, as an officer in the United States Army, you're called upon to manage people. Uh, whether you're a second lieutenant and you're managing about 30 people, or if you're a, an adjutant general and you're managing 13,000, uh, you have to have the, the ability to, to manage large uh, groups of people and to be able to bring them together for a common goal. Uh, so, so the, the, the human resources piece was very, was very beneficial to me. Uh, the finance uh, that, that I took, because you always have budgets that you have to manage in the military. Uh, the, the last budget that I had to manage was $700 million. Uh, uh, without uh, the, the type of training that I got here at Ole Miss, that would have been you know, very difficult for me. In 1990, there were 83% of the faculty holding a PhD from very prestigious institutions all over the country. And that really was a stepping stone into creating a wonderful learning environment for our students. I learned um, many, many valuable things about business and finance in my time here at the business school. However, I think of all the things I learned uh, entering into the real world, what gave me the best foundation was just the confidence in who I am and what my capabilities are as a person and how to 
approach things uh, with the right perspective, ask the right questions, and that is what gave me the framework to really be a strong candidate entering into the workforce. At the business school at Ole Miss, just like Ole Miss in general, it's all about relationships and you know, relationships have started from when I was a small child in the Grove, getting to know different people from the Mississippi area, and I use those relationships, that I, the new relationships I met at Ole Miss through the School of Business, and continue to use those relationships in work. My favorite class was an upper-level economics class. It was really right after you took the micro and macro introductory classes. And in that class, we looked at uh, everyday situations and, and politics and uh, things outside the ordinary uh, micro and macro scenarios. And it, it was similar to Freakonomics and The Tipping Point and some of those books that have been since been written. Um, but it was really interesting and uh, it, was, it was fun. One thing that I learned um, while I was in the business school is how to best work with people and to work with groups. Um, and I've been able to carry that over into the financial services industry, but just in the working world period. Um, I am a one woman show for uh, marketing for the state of Mississippi. And so I have to work with a variety of people and I have to develop those relationships with them to get them to help me do my job, to, get me, uh, to help me do things out in the community, um, to do things internally whenever we have campaigns and different things that we have going on. And so that was a great lesson learned um, while here at Ole Miss and in the business school. Having the opportunity to work within a variety of groups because it really kind of was like welcome to the real world. in 2008 and since then we've really focused on rigor in the classroom and rewarding scholarship by our faculty. We've also had tremendous donations from our donors and engagement. In addition to that we've had the highest rankings we've ever had and since I've been Dean it's, it's been a great and wonderful experience but unfortunately I've aged pretty dramatically since that time as well and especially my B. I think some of the most historic things that have happened since at least I've been Dean has really been the rapid growth that we've seen in the business school. We've grown over 40% in the last six years. The university has also grown. Also, while we're growing, we've also in, had uh, much higher rankings than we've had in the past, and we've achieved the highest rankings we've ever had, for example, in our MBA program, our online program, and our undergraduate business ranking. So we've had great success while we're growing rapidly, which I think is one of the hallmarks of our success. 2017, of course, is our centennial celebration. We're all very excited about this, and it's been a wonderful experience to see the business school do so many things that are great. And we're looking forward to the next 100 years, and as part of that celebration, we're having many events this fall and spring, which is wonderful to celebrate what we've done, but we're also looking forward to the future. have the passion for what you do, you're going to be miserable your whole life. I mean, I've been passionate about everything I've ever done. If you don't like what you're doing, you're not going to be successful. Well, you know, I don't think the business school changes your life as much as the people uh, contribute to your success and become a part of your life. It's not the institution, it's the people. And that's what Ole Miss is all about. <laughs>
I'm going to assume that that applause was for the video and not to, that I was coming to the podium. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Augustus L. Collins, as you can see from the, from the video. Uh, most of my friends will call me Leon. And uh, I, I don't really understand why I was asked to come here and speak. I'm just an old country boy from Boonville, Mississippi. Uh, but I did have the opportunity to, att to attend the University of Mississippi, and I'm a 1982 graduate. Uh, I actually came there from Northeast Mississippi Junior College uh, there in Boonville. Uh, I attended there for two years, which is what probably 90% of the people in Boonville do. Uh, you got a junior college, a quality junior college right there in town, and most of us were like me. We didn't have money to go to a four-year school, so you go to the junior college first, and then you transfer and go to a senior, senior college. But uh, had a great uh, experience at, at, uh, at, at Ole Miss. Uh, I was sitting there, and I was thinking about the, the, the first class, the first day I, at, at, at Ole Miss, and there was an instructor there that, uh, and I don't really understand why he did this, but he decided he was going to go around the room and let everybody tell them their, your name. You didn't have to tell them anything about it, just tell you your name. And, and some of you who were at Ole Miss back during the time when I, I was there, you'll understand this. They were going around the room, and then got to these three guys. They were all in a row. One of them was named Billy Martin. One was named Ty Cobb. And the other one was named Roy Rogers. <laughs> after he did that, he shut it down after that because he figured they were all pulling his leg. But it was, that was actually their real names. <laughs> you know, we had three celebrities in, in, our, in our class. You know, as I look back on, on, on my life now, you know, I, I, I noticed the uh, decisions that you make. And, I, and I've, I've identified, you, you know, John, you find this hard to believe, I've identified a few bad decisions I've made. Uh, but I've identified some good decisions that I've made also. And, and one of the good decisions I made was to attend 10 Ole Miss. Uh, uh, you know, I, uh, you know, I got a, a Bachelor of Business Administration degree from, from Ole Miss. And, uh, you know, and some folks will say, well, why did you choose that particular field? Well, when I was a boy, one of the things that I wanted that I never got was a Swiss Army knife. Now, those of you who understand what a Swiss Army knife is, it's one of those big, it's, it's a type of knife that if you went through the airport with today, you'd go spread eagle, you know, when they, when they tried to take it from you. But it has all types of blades on it. It's got screwdrivers. It might even have a pair of wire pliers. Some of them even had a spoon. Now, a Swiss Army knife can do a lot of different things. So can a Bachelor of Business Administration degree. It can send you in a lot of different directions. Uh, my case, I went to the military. As you can see from, from the video, I, I talk about how you know, the, 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 the finance classes helped me in preparing and executing budgets, so some pretty large budgets because the military is, is pretty big business. It, it helped me to communicate individually and with groups because you've got to be an effective communicator when you're, when you're dealing with, with troops, especially when you're trying to get them to accomplish a particular type of mission. Uh, so all of that helped me as I was going through, through my military. Now, I had some great times, you know, uh, participated in a lot of activities on, on campus, intramural sports. Uh, uh, you know, we didn't have a really good football team when I was there, but, uh, but it was still fun to go to. And, and I, I remember one particular uh, uh, event that, uh, like I said, I didn't have a lot of money when I was at Ole Miss. And uh, uh, Ole Miss was playing a football game here in Jackson. And it was, it was a morning game. One of my friends, Mike Lester from Boonville, this was on Friday night. Everybody had, had, had vacated Oxford at that time. We wanted to go to the ball game. And we put our money together, and we said, well, we got enough money to buy gas. And uh, I, don't, I don't remember what the, the ticket situation was back then, if they were giving us a cut rate or, or the students got in free. But anyway, we figured out we'd be able to get into the ball game. But we didn't have any money to eat. <laughs> so... We decided, I said, all right, well, we can, we can leave early in the morning. We can make it to the ball game, and then we just drive back after that. We said, well, how are we going to eat? So we did have enough money to go to the grocery store and buy a fryer. Now, now some of you know what a fryer is, right? It's a whole chicken. <laughs> so we, we cooked that chicken the night before, and, and that's what we took with us to the ball game. We ate chicken on the way down here. We ate chicken on the way back. But, but, but even that was a great experience. And as a matter of fact, I was reminded by Mike Lester of that about a year ago, that, that one particular experience. 
But when I graduated from, from Ole Miss, I didn't have a job. And uh, the, the, the counselor from Northeast Junior College actually called me and says, uh, uh, I, I got a call from the, the man at the Mississippi Employment Security Commission office up in Corinth, and they're looking to hire somebody. Are you interested in that job? I said, yeah. He said, well, why don't you give this guy a call? So I called him. It's a gentleman by the name of uh, Jesse Hallmark. I called Mr. Hallmark, identified myself, and just so happened, Jesse Hallmark was a 1963 graduate of the University of Mississippi. Now, I give you that story because, you know, I, I want to talk to you about the network. You know, the network. Uh, Dr. Sire says that 72% of our students, you know, have, gra have jobs upon graduation. That other 28% needs jobs, too. And that's where the network comes in. And that's one of the things that we as, as, as alumni can, can help benefit that because what we want is that all of our graduates, when they, when they walk off that campus, to have a job in hand where they can go out and start making a living for themselves. So whatever we can do, that, that, that's one of the goals that we, we need to have as alumni to support our university in that way. Uh, now, I will uh, be uh, moving in as the, uh, the president of the Alumni Association at, at homecoming this year. They tell, <laughs> they, they, they tell me I take over at halftime, so I, I, I don't know <laughs> what that means. But at halftime or homecoming, I'm going to be the president of the Alumni Association. That's one of the things that I really want to push. You, know, you only get a year in that job. But, but, but if, if there's something that I can do that's going to help our graduates, have jobs when they leave the university. That, that's one of the things I'm going to try to push for the next year that I'm in that, I'm in that job. So uh, if, if there's something that uh, you know, I come up with and I, I call you, I'm going to need you to answer the phone uh, because we're going to need your help. Now, you know, some of my better experiences have happened you know, since, I, since I've been a graduate. You know, I've been involved with the Alumni Association. Uh, my sons and I, we go to all the football games, especially all the bowl games. And, uh, uh, but I've had the opportunity to, to then learn more about the university outside of the business school. And there's a lot of great things going on, you know. Uh, Dr. Sari talked about the accounting program we got there, one of the top in the nation. You know, pharmacy school, doing great work. Uh, uh, we're doing a lot of research uh, on campus up there every, every single day that a lot of people don't know about. But, uh, but Ole Miss is leading the way in a lot of different, a lot of different areas. So uh, uh, I, I am proud to be a, an Ole Miss alumni, and, and I, I try to get up there as much as I can. Now, a lot of things have changed since 1982. Mistless is closed. Uh, Kiami is burned to the ground. Uh, but I tell you, I, when I go up on, on ball game weekends, I still have breakfast at the Beacon. Now, uh, and I, I tell this to a lot of people, you know, we have a lot of fine colleges and universities in this state, uh, contrary to popular belief, but, but we've got a lot of good schools here uh, where, where a young man or young woman can go and get an outstanding education. But there's only one flagship university. <laughs> that's, and that's Ole Miss. So, uh, football is just around the corner. So, fins up. <laughs> Good afternoon. My name is Candy Simmons. My journey with Ole Miss began when I was five years old. Little did I know at that time, this school would hold a special place in my heart 13 plus years later. My first visit to campus was for my brother because he was competing in a gymnastics meet at the Turner Center. When we arrived on campus, we stopped a man and asked for directions to the Turner Center. He saw our Jackson County car tags and said he was also from the coast. He and my parents engaged in a short conversation before he got into his car and led us to the center. We did not know it at the time, but later we learned that he was one of Ole Miss's beloved sons, the former chancellor, Robert Kayat. Attending Ole Miss was awesome. I enjoyed a full university experience. I participated in the student government, student alumni council, the Baptist Student Union. I joined a sorority tutored at Bramlett Elementary, and ran for Miss Ole Miss. 
I had fun. I tried to get my School of Business Academic Counselor, Ms. Hodge, to extend my graduation by a year. However, that didn't work out too well. So after graduation, I went to work for a company in St. Louis for three months during the months of October, November, and December. This girl from the Mississippi Gulf Coast, who had seen snow probably twice in her lifetime, was now living and driving in it every day. Needless to say, that didn't last long. I called my dad, I told him my story, and that I was going to quit my job. Well, he gave me his career-building perseverance speech and said, I think you were giving me up, giving up, but tell me what you need me to do. I said, I need you to drive the U-Haul back to Oxford. <laughs> See, Oxford had become a comfort zone for me, not in a stagnant way, but in a good way. Moving back to Oxford after an attempt of living further north than I had ever desired helped me to realize what's important, and that was and still is today. As General Collins stated earlier, maintaining my connections with the School of Business across campus and within the Oxford community, which has led me to where I am today. My start was slow. I worked part-time at various department stores, and about a year after graduation, my career began to take off. I began working at Ole Miss in the Office of Admissions as a recruiter, and then in the Alumni Office as Assistant Director of Alumni Affairs. This is where I learned what faithful and committed alumni looked like. They looked like Leanne Tuohy, Wilson Roberts, Rose Jackson Flanora, Warner Alford, Sheila Dossett, and for those of you who happen to know downtown Jimmy Brown, Janie Geis, who recruited me, and Sandra and Tyrus McCarty, my family away from home. These are only some of the folks who taught me how to serve and made it possible for me to stand here today. See, I mentioned all of these names, not to name drop, but to share the fact that the School of Business taught me something that was extremely important. It is not something you learn in the classroom or from a textbook, but you just learn it by building relationships with people from day to day. And that key word and valuable asset I learned was networking. It is the key to everything when it comes to business, seeking that career opportunity, and succeeding in life. The School of Business taught me to not be afraid to talk to people and share your career aspirations, especially when asked. That is how I began my career with Regions, which was strictly by accident, but definitely a blessing. While in alumni affairs one evening, we had a reception for the board members, and one of my coworkers was talking to a gentleman, and I walked over and joined their conversation. We talked for all of five minutes before I moved somewhere else in the room. The next day before the meeting, I saw this same alum, and he stopped me and introduced me to his wife, and then asked me what my degree is in, and I said marketing. He asked, well, what do you plan to do with your degree? Do you plan to stay here? I told him I enjoy what I do for now, but eventually I will be looking to do something more in my field. He said, well, I work for a bank and we have marketing there as well. Here is my card. Why don't you send me your resume? I said, I am headed to my office now and I will do that. Yes, I had my resume on my desktop. The School of Business taught me to always be prepared and ready. There weren't any marketing opportunities available at that time. However, I continued to keep in touch, or I could say I continued to network. And about five months later, I ran into this alum and told him after the first of the year, I was going to be looking to leave my position at Ole Miss. At this time, I had been in alumni affairs close to two years. In business, we must know when it is time to move forward, not move on, but to move forward. As luck would have it, at the time I was ready to make my move, a marketing position with Regions came available. My career took off. I was hired as the North Mississippi Marketing Coordinator and began working on January 31st, 2006. 
11 months later, I was promoted to the Mississippi Marketing Manager. Five and a half months after that, I was promoted to the Southwest Region Marketing Director, later to a Senior Vice President, and now today, I stand here as a member of the corporate marketing team for Regions as a geography marketing strategist. I am still trying to figure out exactly what that title means, but I said all of this to say this, the School of Business and Ole Miss are where I got my start. It's where I will continue and finish because I owe many of my life lessons, experiences, relationships, and career path to the education I received from the Ole Miss School of Business, and I'm proud to stand here as a two-time graduate of the school. Thank you so much for this opportunity, and hotty toddy. Well, good afternoon. Some of the usual suspects out here in the audience today, and glad to see all of you. And thank you for Archives and History uh, for inviting me to be a part of this. And uh, Stella, the job you and Neil White did on this is remarkable, the book, the film. And for those of you who've not read Neil White's book, In the Sanctuary of Outcasts, one of the best books ever written by Mississippians, I would urge you to take, to take a look at that. Uh, I'm very cognizant of one o'clock, so if I'm looking down here at my iPhone, it's not that I'm reading messages. I recognize the importance of your time. Let me tell you, before I get into this, for the, <clears throat> obviously you love history, you wouldn't be here. Uh, I started my own business 22 years ago. We buy timberlands for pension funds from around the world. Uh, and our headquarters, or since that time, I've developed a terrible addiction, and it is an addiction to redoing historic buildings. And so for those of you who are ever in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, come by and see an old sawmill town we bought 12 years ago now and refurbished it into an office. It's still got its old commissary, uh, got doctor's office, workers' houses, uh, and it is, has signage that was developed. It was the last thing that our friend Cavett Taft did before he passed away, and it is a beautiful tour, and you're welcome anytime right outside Hattiesburg in a little community of Bon Hami. Uh, and it will let, give you a glimpse back into to the past. Very quickly, what did I learn at Ole Miss? Four, four quick lessons. The first one I learned when I was uh, 18 years old, brand new freshman there. Uh, there's an accounting professor named Jimmy Davis, who I think was born in the business school. He still teaches there. He taught me in 1967, 50 years ago. Very strong, very tough professor. So here I was, I found myself taking his class, strenuous class, our first big test came up, and I had, gosh, it was this really pretty young <clears throat> freshman from Memphis I'd asked out twice. She was totally ignoring me, and so, Anyway, she happened to call the night before that test and said, hey, I'm available. So I'm sitting here thinking, I've got a decision. <laughs> On one hand, I can study debits and credits and current ratios. On the other hand, I can take out this beautiful 18-year-old girl. So as an 18-year-old with high testosterone, guess which one I did? <laughs> uh, so I, uh, we went on this great date. The next morning, I had a class at the crack of dawn at 8 o'clock, so I woke up about 10 or 8, ran as fast as I could, took the test, and the first test was, question was, what is a current ratio? For those of you who are non-accountants, current ratios is the look, how many liquid assets you have, less the liquid, your debts. And so, simple. So I said, well, it's a ratio of how many people in your company who know current events. Uh, <laughs> And so it got better from that. The next class I went back, it came back and it looked like a Christmas tree. It was just all lit up with red. And Jimmy Davis says, D minus, 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 by the grace of God and Jimmy Davis. Uh, so I learned accounting. I know what a current ratio is. I use that stuff every day. Uh, but we had remarkable professors. Uh, Doctor, I learned not to discount new ideas. We had a professor, Dr. Fenstermacher, who's at Ball State now. 
He came in 1968. He said, it was outrageous. We had a discussion about this. He said, let me tell you what's going to happen in the future. Cash and checks are going to become obsolete, and you're going to be able to carry around a little card in your billfold. And so it's going to be a magic card. And so we all made fun of him. It's not going to happen. 1968, he predicted credit cards as a way that we would do business. First time I'd ever heard that or even thought about it. The, second, the third lesson I learned, <coughs> we, we had a professor named Dr. Runling, <coughs> taught us management. Again, back in 1968, if you remember, that was a period when we were selling Mississippi on what I call the moonlight magnolias, mint juleps theory of economic development. Come down here, we'll serve you grits and gravy and give you cheap labor and tax breaks. Dr. Runling in 1968 said, that is exactly the wrong thing to do for business. Business people want to come to a community where there's a high quality of life, where the, where the, commu where the businesses are involved in the community. And he predicted then, he says, this is a dead end street. What I hope Mississippi will eventually do is develop a quality of life and let that become its economic base. 1968. And then last but not least, some of you may remember Dr. Parks, who was a uh, professor at Harvard. He's, he developed this whole theory of case studies. And he came to Ole Miss, and uh, we got in this big discussion. I'd never heard of this. Many of you have heard that corporations have no conscience, that they're just entities on paper, and they have no allegiance to anything other than their shareholders. And so he said, I don't believe that, which is great provocative stuff. And so he, he led us through a discussion that the best businesses, the ones that last, are the ones that do well and do good at the same time. And they're not mutually exclusive. And that's pretty profound stuff for a 20-year-old to, to find, to come back on. So now I find myself uh, running a business. I started 22 years ago. I know how to do accounting. I know, I know to accept new ideas. I know that we build our communities on better people and that being in business is not mutually exclusive of doing some good in the community. I think we have a few minutes for question and answer. If there are any questions, you raise your hand, I'll bring you the mic and we'll put it to them. Good. Well, let me, let me give you the microphone anyway. What happened to the 18 year old? <laughs> I graduated from the University of Mississippi in the early 1980s. And two things happened to me while I was there. I, I met my husband, whom I love and like very much. And um, I met Melody Dowell. And speaking of um, networking, Yes, she is. Um, Melody, I, my first job, professional job out of college was at Trustmark National Bank. And Melody walked into the bank and recognized me. She said, girl, what are you doing here? I said, I'm working. She said, do you want to stay here? I said, well, what you got? <laughs> she worked down the street at Merrill Lynch. She said, I can get you the interview, but I can't promise you the job. I got the job, and I was scared to death. And Melody, I said, Melody, I'm a black woman in Mississippi managing other people's money. And she gave me the best advice, and I was very successful there. She said, it won't be a problem unless you make it one. Mm -hmm. And I had a great career at Merrill Lynch. And Melody is still one of my good friends. <laughs> I just want to thank the panel for coming today, and especially Dick Moppus with the Neshoba County Fair going on today, yes. and you coming all the way up here for that with all the speeches. Thanks for being here, sir. Thank you, Johnny. Uh, I was remiss in forgetting that we do have a new program that we call Business Connect, and our person will start maybe even Monday if we're really lucky 
and he will go out and connect with businesses to try to get people to come back to Ole Miss to hire a rebel. And that's what it's all about, as you heard today. It's about making these young folks successful. So if he calls on you, he's not asking you for money. He's asking you to, to give us a shot at placing uh, our students with you and then helping them start their career like we heard on the video. Amy Joe Carpenter can also help with that too. And we really appreciate your dedication to the state of Mississippi and to the University of Mississippi, even if you're not an alumnus. So thank you very much. Any other? We have copies of the Centennial History for Sale over here. All these fine folks are featured in the book and we'll be happy to autograph it for you. Thank you all for coming today. I hope that we see you all next week. Help me thank this panel for this program.